Welcome to Emergency Insights. I'm your host, James Carter. Today, we're delving into a challenging scenario in emergency medicine, refractory bronchospasm. Joining us to shed light on this is Dr. Amelia Jones, an expert in emergency and critical care medicine. Dr. Jones, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure, James. Happy to contribute. Let's start with the basics, Dr. Jones. For our listeners, how do we define refractory bronchospasm in the context of an emergency setting? Simply put, James, refractory bronchospasm refers to severe airway constriction that does not adequately respond to conventional first-line therapies. We're typically talking about persistent wheezing and respiratory distress despite aggressive and repeated doses of inhaled short-acting beta agonists like albuterol, often combined with anticholinergics such as epitropium. This can be seen in severe asthma exacerbations, COPD, or even anaphylaxis, signaling a need for alternative interventions. That makes sense. Now, let's get into the practical application. What is the recommended dosage and preparation for nebulized epinephrine in adults with refractory bronchospasm? This is crucial for our frontline providers. Indeed, precision is key here. For adults, the standard recommended dose is 0.5 to 1 milligram of epinephrine. We typically use the 1 milligram per milliliter concentration, which is commonly available as the cardiac ampule. To prepare it for nebulization, you'll take 0.5 to 1 milliliter of the 1 milligram per milliliter epinephrine solution and dilute it with 4 milliliters of normal saline. This yields a total volume of 5 milliliters which should then be administered via nebulizer over approximately 10 to 15 minutes. It's imperative to double check concentrations and calculations to prevent medication errors. Given its potent effects, what are the critical monitoring parameters that healthcare providers need to be vigilant about during and after administration of nebulized epinephrine? Continuous and close patient monitoring is non-negotiable. Epinephrine has significant systemic effects, so we must closely observe for cardiovascular changes, such as tachycardia, hypertension, and the potential for cardiac arrhythmias. Patients may also experience anxiety, tremors, or palpitations. Beyond the cardiovascular system, diligent assessment of the patient's respiratory status is vital. Track their work of breathing, accessory muscle use, oxygen saturation, and of course listen for improvement in their breath sounds. Epinephrine is generally a temporizing measure, buying time while we identify and address the underlying cause of the refractory bronchospasm. Excellent points on monitoring. Finally, Dr. Jones, are there any important caveats, contraindications, or alternative strategies to consider if nebulized epinephrine is ineffective or not appropriate? Yes, several crucial considerations. While generally safe, caution is advised in patients with pre-existing severe cardiac disease, uncontrolled hypertension, or significant tachyarrhythmias, as the cardiovascular effects of epinephrine could exacerbate these conditions. Providers must also be aware of drug interactions. If nebulized epinephrine is ineffective or contraindicated, or as a complementary measure, other therapies might include intravenous magnesium sulfate, which can relax bronchial smooth muscle, or even heliox, a helium oxygen mixture that reduces airway resistance. Ultimately, if a patient remains unresponsive, escalation of care to advanced airway management, including intubation and mechanical ventilation, must be a prompt consideration. Dr. Amelia Jones, that was an incredibly clear and practical overview of nebulized epinephrine for refractory bronchospasm. Thank you for sharing your expertise on Emergency Insights. My pleasure, James. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to Emergency Insights. We hope this discussion provides valuable guidance for your clinical practice. Join us next time for another critical topic in emergency medicine. Stay safe and stay informed.